Welcome to Lightning Web Components. Let's talk about how we compose for Lightning App Builder. So I'm starting here in one of our sample applications, our LWC Recipes app, which has short recipes that show you how to solve common problems with Lightning Web Components in about 30 lines of code or less. And here on the Composition tab, we have several different recipes about how you compose components. And I want to look at our Composition with App Builder component right here. And as we can see, we have three different properties here, and they come from Lightning App Builder. So let's open up this component in Lightning App Builder and see what it looks like. When I click on the component, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see I have three different attributes with different information. This one's a pick list, and I can change its value. I have a placeholder text for my string value that lets me know I should type something. So we'll say, hello, web. And I have a number value here that I can change to whatever I want. And as I save the page, you'll notice I even get validation rules here. We can see that my number value has an invalid property, and I'm getting a message about why it's wrong, that it has to be between 0 and 100. So I have some data validation here as well. So let's go ahead and save our component. And let me show you the code about how we got this to be built. I'm here in Visual Studio Code, and I'm looking at the source code for my recipes app. And I have right here the composition with App Builder component we were just looking at. And I'm going to open up this JS Meta XML file. This file contains the markup that lets you compose for Lightning App Builder. It starts here on line four by setting the attribute that is exposed is true, means that we're exposing it for availability on Lightning App Builder pages. This targets attribute lets us determine the type of pages we want to expose it to. Here you can see we've said app pages, which are those independent standalone tabs, as well as the home page. Down at the target config area, we can now expose those properties that we saw at design time. So we have our pick list value, our string value, and our number value. And on our number value, you remember we had some data validation. Well, that simply came by declaring the type, the data type of integer, and giving it a minimum and maximum threshold. The rest was taken care of for us by Lightning App Builder. I didn't have to write a validation message, and it handled error messaging for the user, both the pop-up and that inline error. The string value had its placeholder because I set it right here as an attribute. And all of this is how I could compose that component for App Builder. But it gets even better. Let's go ahead and modify our XML code, and let's change it. Let's go ahead and insert different markup. And you can see I've added a few lines here. I've added the ability to add it to Lightning Record Pages now. Those are those object-specific pages. And down on lines 16 through 23, you can see I've now added an independent target config just for my Lightning Record page. So now with Lightning Web Components, I can have one behavior on, say, an application page or a home page, and a completely different behavior on a record page. So now I've added the ability for this component to be on a record page, and I'm restricting the objects that it's compatible with. I'm saying it can only be used on the contact object. So let's save our changes, and I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to my default Scratch org that we were just looking at. and let's go see what it looks like. So I'm back in my Scratch org, and now that I've modified the attributes for our component, let's go to a contact page, and let's try to add it to a page. So I'm going to the Carolyn Kingsley contact record, and when we open up Lightning App Builder, we should see our component. Collapse the standard components, scroll down, and sure enough, composition with App Builder. I can drag it on the page, and now you see I also have the same attributes as I declared in my target config. Now let's see what this looks like on an account page. I'm on an account page now, so let's open it in Lightning App Builder. And when we go to the custom components, we do not see our composition with App Builder component, thanks to that objects tag limiting its use. Some takeaways from what we just talked about? You can compose for Lightning App Builder by using XML tags in that JS Meta XML file for your component. The isExposed tag controls the visibility of that component at a global level, and the targets and target config tags let you customize what 
Lightning app pages the component can show up on and how it's going to behave on those pages. The property and objects details let you expose design time attributes as well as restrict its use to certain objects in your org. If you want to learn more, go to the short link here and you'll get the latest on Trailhead in a trail mix that's all about Lightning Web Components. Thanks for joining me and we'll catch you next time.